Good evening. Welcome to another edition of the 411 Talk Zone radio show right here on YouTube. And yet I got another clip for you all. And I'm going to give my version of the Dalai Lama. Now, as you know, in the past, if you've been watching my channel for the past six, seven years, I'm one of the only YouTubers that actually talks about psychology and deviant behavior. Now, this video, it's going to be the same. See some deviant behavior. And I'm going to talk about tonight, deviant behavior by a religious icon. The title of tonight's video is Deviant Behavior by a religious icon. Now, I am not knocking religion. I believe in God. But there are a number of individuals, deacons, bishops, pastors, and now you even have the Dalai Lama, who are supposed to be religious leaders in houses of the Lord. But one thing that is not said with all of these religious icons is that they are human as well. Now, I'm going to go deeper than that. A number of these religious icons have deviant behavior in their minds as well. And I can give you some examples. In Baltimore, just before I moved to Pennsylvania, there was a Catholic, I'm going to say father or priest, who assaulted a boy. Now, when we look at these icons in religion, we always talk about what they would do to young girls, but we forget about the boys. Now, I will say this, when it comes to the Catholic Church, you have priests, and priests are supposed to go without any type of sexual, I don't want to say attention, because that's going to sound a little bit deviant. I'm going, to, I'm going to say this, without any intimacy. I like that word a lot better. Intimacy from the opposite sex. So when you are a priest, you're basically a monk. But underneath the robes of these priests, you have some deviance. Now, I'm going to share my screen with you. And just bear with me. And let's go on to the video. Fair use, fair use. Now that one, that one wasn't so bad, but there are other ones out there. Now again, let me go ahead and 
share my screen again. Now they're talking about, again, before I get into the video, let's check the article out. And this is by Fox News, and I will leave the link at the bottom of my comment section. Now, this is very important because, again, we have a number of individuals who are stuck on religion. Now, again, not saying religion is bad, but you have a number of individuals who use religion as an excuse to be deviant. Now, we've seen in a Nashville shooting a transgender person kill six people. There was no outrage. It's like that story. We know it took place. It's gone. We saw the massacre by an employee in Louisville, Kentucky. Now, you hear that one all day because that person was an employee, most likely a Caucasian male. You also don't hear too much about the police officers in Memphis, Tennessee. Why? Because those individuals were African-American. Now, I'm going off the topic a little bit, but with media out here, there's a lot of hypocrisy going on. Now, let me get into the Dalai Lama. Right now, the Dalai Lama is under fire after a disturbing video and basically showed him kissing a young boy on the lips and asking him to suck his tongue, and it basically sparked a lot of outrage. Now, in the shocking footage that was reportedly filmed in February, a young boy asked the uh, the Tibetan spiritual leader for a hug. Now, in that video, it was nothing wrong with the hug. That was okay. But then the Dalai Lama then invited the young boy on stage, and after the hug, the spiritual leader forcibly lifts the boy's head from underneath his chin to kiss him on the lips. Now, the pair pressed foreheads together in a bizarre scene before it got stranger. Suck my tongue, the Dalai Lama said while sticking out his tongue. The boy appeared uncomfortable and began to fulfill the 87-year-old's request, but didn't go through with it. Now, once the, vir the video did go viral, the Dalai Lama issued a statement apologizing to the boy and his family while also downplaying it as playful teasing. Now, again, the unearthed footage an apology were shredded on social media when critics even calling the Dalai Lama a pedophile and a sick old man. You missed the bit where he kissed the boy and asked him to suck the Dalai Lama's tongue, columnist Owen Jones responded. Now, the filmmaker Luke Renner asked, why is this written in the third person? His holiness abused a child face-to-face -face, but can't be bothered to personally address the matter himself. Now again, now Parrott says Dalai Lama blames George Floyd's death on discrimination, racism, during a compassion lecture. That's a different story. Now journalist Ranim Bo Zahn responded, teasing, this has nothing to do with teasing. This is a highly questionable behavior jeopardizing a little boy's mental health, and it falls under the abuse of childhood innocence. Why did, did you even have such a filthy and revolting thought? You're truly disgusting. You are a menace to children. And that was from a South African geologist with over 400,000 followers who responded to the apology. Now, you can see some of the, the Twitters, like this one from Ian Miles. Chion, this is sick. This is a sick, disturbing video. Making a child stick his tongue. That emerged months ago, but has only just been made waves on social media, prompting the holy man to issue an apology. Why was it this a problem before it went viral? 
Now, the sick, disturbing video of the Dalai Lama making a child suck his tongue emerged months ago, but it has only, again, it's made waves on social media. Now, do I want to really put something like that up on my channel? I'm not going to put that up on my channel. I just changed my mind about it because I've done enough stories on deviant behavior, and we're seeing too much deviant behavior today, especially when it comes to the kids. We've had a course of individuals, same-sex individuals, talking about, we're coming for your children. Now, again, I said it in a video before. Our children are the future, and when we allow defenseless children to be manipulated by adults who have a insane mind themselves, we have a problem. Now, again, the incident occurred in northern India, and many Indian journalists were among the first to condemn it. Journalist Isma Ara wrote, there's nothing innocent or playful about asking a minor to suck your tongue. Imagine the celebrations in China that a once great defiant legacy, once a one that, that took the Tibetan struggle to the world is now laid to waste. No matter how much the West plays this down, there's nothing innocent or playful about pedophilia. No geopolitical caves to hide in India today, reporter Shove over or responded. Bobby Starbuck added, you've got a part about you ask the boy to kiss you and suck your tongue. That a foul behavior. That is disgusting. Arthur Oil London believes the Dalai Lama committed sexual assault of a minor. What he did was sexual assault of a minor. He could be charged and imprisoned. Sick old man, London wrote. Not just your words, but the bit where you kissed him on the mouth. Grab him by the chin and move your head towards his face with your tongue sticking out. That's what journalist Annabelle Ross wrote. Uh, again, this behavior, and it's not just the Dalai Lama, but it's pastors, priests, other icons who are supposed to be monks and religious leaders. Now, the problem is, when it comes to the church, we think everybody in the church is innocent. Now, let me tell you something. Your religious institutions have a lot of individuals who get down in some deviant behavior. Why isn't it discussed? It's not discussed because deep down, we don't want that getting the mainstream media because we want to keep people going to church. now. Men like me don't go to church because we know what's happening. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe in God. However, I do not believe in the people in a church because in individuals in church, they're supposed to take the word of God, pass it on to people. They're not supposed to use being saved or being part of a religious institute to do deviant behavior. Now, again, there's a video out floating around. But when it comes to deviant behavior, it's a, it's a lot of it going on, and it has been going on. Now, in the past, we didn't have 24-hour media, nor did we have social media to monitor this, to monitor this behavior that's going on. We have it. And it's gotten out of hand. But nobody's doing anything about it. I mean, we talk about what we want to do. But nobody wants to address that small minority, the alphabet community, for their deviant behavior. We may go after a, a few priests, like the late Bishop Eddie Long. Now, sit back a moment. See, a lot of this deviant behavior we would think would take place with girls. 
with the boys. The problem is our boys who have been victims of predatory adults, their words aren't heard. We don't believe in the boys. That's a big problem. We believe nothing happens to boys. Boys are shunned. We live here in the West where everything is about the female and what they believe. But our boys are behind. You look at people like Tyler Perry. He had some bad things happen to him when he was young. Now, some of these individuals turn into same sex or they love the same sex because they were molested. They were abused. Nobody helped them. But we will help the females and we will even let the females when they lie about being R-E-P-E-D get away with it. But yet we don't help the boys. There was a 2002 movie out about a sailor Antoine Fisher, if you're familiar with that, he had individuals that sexually assaulted him, and they were females. See, we believe that being predatory is just a male crime. No females are doing it as well. But the problem is, particularly here in the West, we've allowed that sick, deviant behavior. And when we allow it, particularly from individuals who come from the alphabet community, and you have some individuals who are hetero as well, because they're from religious institutions. We don't want to say anything about that. That's a big problem. Now, of course, the Dalai Lama is not the only one that has done this type of deviant act. Now, he's trying to back away with an apology. Well, here's the problem. He shouldn't have done it in the first place. Now, not too many people are doing this story. But he shouldn't have done it in the first place. We, as, as a Western man, we're already looked at. Even if we don't do anything, it's predatory. And being black, we're looked at as being over-sexual. So that makes us look predatory, even though a number of us, a number of us aren't. The bottom line, when it comes to children, children are being exposed sexually at young ages. They're not allowed to be children. They're being recruited into lifestyles they don't even know about. And they want to get the children because the children don't know any better. They're defenseless. And in some cases, the elderly women, elderly men are also defenseless. And that's the problem. One thing about predators, they always prey on the weak. Now, again, you've had other pastors who have done the same thing. No matter what, when you hold that title of Dalai Lama, priest, pastor, You are in a position of leadership, but you don't take that position and use it on anyone, especially a defenseless child. Now, why am I doing this story? Doing it because I see a number of boys. Why aren't we helping them? Why aren't we looking at Why boys act out? Why aren't we going back there asking the boys what happened to you when you were younger? The reason why 
Nobody's doing it because they don't care about boys. They care about the girls, but not the boys. But more and more, boys are coming out, talking about what happened to them when they were children. And, and the worst thing is, if you could take something innocent away from a child and you're an adult, and that child is going to have that inability to have relationships, the child is going to be promiscuous. The child is going to end up harming somebody innocent when that child is an adult. So bottom line, when it comes to religious leaders out here, don't believe them at all. Because most of them are using the church for their deviant behavior under religion and also using the religious institution to make money. But set aside the money, the bottom line is when it comes to the children, children are off limits. Bottom line, the Dalai Lama is coming out apologizing. But let's look at other religious folk. What have they done to children? What's going to happen to them? Now, the Dalai Lama is almost 90 years old. Are you going to lock him up? No, you're not going to lock him up. But the bottom line is, he committed an act. Now, committing an act, they're going to have a number of copycats. And they're going to come from the alphabet community because you have a number of individuals in that community. It's a small minority. They have the loudest mouths. But they want a lot of deviant behavior. In fact, they want a P at the end of their name. They call it LGBTQ. The P is not in there yet. They want that in there. And in that community, they have the organization called NAMLA. That's the National Man-Boy Love Association. You know, so many individuals in that community, they didn't have a problem with it. But most of us who are pretty much traditionalists, and when I mean traditionalists, I mean you have a man and a woman and you have children. And we look at leaders in a community from church to business as teachers. But you also have to realize that they're human beings too. They're not perfect. So we shouldn't see these humans as one to worship. They should be teaching. But in the end, are these monks, these priests, should they be allowed to marry? That's the question that you have to ask. Because being a priest, it's a difficult job. I know it is. And there are a lot of other cases out there that have taken place, more than the Dalai Lama. They just haven't been uncovered yet. But again, should priests be allowed to marry? You be the judge, you leave the answer in the comment section. Again, I'm going to post a link to this article also in my comment section. And that concludes this topic right here on the 401 Talk Zoom radio show channel. If you like what I just presented, please comment, share, and subscribe. And if you are looking for some STEM content, you check out the QCIS channel. On that channel, I'll give you a daily dose of science, technology, engineering, and math. And if you cannot find the 401 Talk Zone radio show or the QCIS channel, 
on YouTube. You check both of those channels out on Twitter. And for the QCIS channel, I take it one step further. So find that channel because it's an educational channel. QCIS channel is on my LinkedIn page. And in the end, be blessed for what you have. Don't worry about what you don't have. Always know that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. And if it doesn't apply, let it fly. But the shoe fits, wear it. If you don't like the shoe, change it. Once again, thank you for listening to this edition of the 411 Talk Zone Radio Show right here on YouTube. Till next time. My name is Leon Jones. I want you all to have a wonderful and gracious evening. God bless you. I'm out.